Okay, <coughs> so this talk contains uh, fast-moving animations, Android APIs, and some trigonometry. So if you have issues with any of those things, then now's a good time to sneak away before anyone notices. So, um, uh, yeah, so also, if you're interested in an iOS version of this, my lovely colleague, former colleague Greg Spears gave a talk uh, yesterday about how to do this on iOS. Um, which obviously you've missed now, so that's unfortunate, but you can hopefully catch up on YouTube when that goes up there. <laughs> it's well worth watching. Um, my talk is about custom layout managers for RecyclerView. I'm going to tell you what they are, why you might want to use them, and how to use them. Um, so my name is Poly Polly Mickledowney. I work on the BBC Radio and Music Native Apps team. I work with these, these lovely people. Um, to give you a bit, bit of background context, um, we originally worked on the um, iPlayer Radio, BBC iPlayer Radio native app on both iOS and Android. Um, and then more recently, uh, I've been working on the BBC Sounds app, um, which is also on both iOS and Android. Um, there's also a BBC Sounds web version as well, which is uh, that's managed by a separate team <laughs> in London. Um, so. When <laughs> I was working on BBC iPlayer Radio uh, when the decision was made to, to have a new app, which obviously is a very exciting thing. We all got very excited about that. Um, it's what every developer wants to hear. It means you can have the opportunity to bin all your legacy code and start again in all these nice, shiny new technologies like Kotlin and Swift. So it's not just the languages that we wanted to change. We wanted to change um, pretty much everything about how we worked. Let me just see if I can get rid of this bar at the bottom, sorry. Oh no, didn't want to do that, did I? Let's try again. Uh, oh, I don't know. Can I drag it? I'm not sure why, where that goes. Anyway, I don't think it's going to cover up anything too important. I'll just carry on. Um, so in the iPlayer radio world, we had a lot of dependent services, um, which kind of made life quite complicated. It meant that you know, quite often when a back-end service broke for whatever reason, we didn't even know who to talk to, who maintained it. Um, so in the BBC Sounds world, it became a lot simpler. We, we basically decided, we'll, we'll take this opportunity to build our own app-level service layer, which means that we can reduce a lot of the duplication we had um, you know, with our client-side logic. Um, basically, the Android app and the iOS app and the web product for iPlayer Radio, they all had to write some code to um, deal with all these different responses and aggregate them and present them in, in the apps. This slide, when it appears, is very impressive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it will show you, basically, that uh, iPlayer Radio has been around for a long time. Uh, it's been around since uh, 2013. And um, basically, the first screen that you see on iPlayer Radio when you come into it is, is a dial. Uh, it's like a live station dial. Um, so you, you basically have a, a spinny bit at the top. and. Uh, where you, where you kind of have the pictures of the live stations. I'll just describe it. This is like the alternate text for this GIF. Uh, and then when you, <laughs> when you spin, spin the bottom, it shows you all the live stations and what's, what's currently on. Uh, users love it. Uh, we've had a lot of very positive user feedback about it. It's, it's quite a sort of playful, immersive experience. Um, uh, as developers, we loved it as well. Um, but I guess um, we wanted to we felt that we could do better. We, we wanted to iterate on, on it a little bit. Um, a lot of people thought, because there was only live content that they saw when they came to the app, they thought that iPlayer Radio was just for streaming live radio. They didn't realize you could even get on-demand content through it. Um, but obviously, you can, and that's a little bit heartbreaking when you spent all this time building this lovely uh, on-demand playback experience that nobody found. <laughs> so now, in sounds, we've got some on-demand stuff right there on the front page which is great. And the dial, uh, which as you obviously can compare with the previous slide, which you didn't see, has been shrunk to the top. Um, so this is the initial wireframe that we got for BBC Sounds. Um, and obviously, you know, as, as engineers, you start to think about how you're going to build it. 
Um, the bottom part of the screen is, is pretty straightforward. It's just um, a list of things, isn't it? Um, and you know, on Android, typically when you have a list of things, all you do is you um, you put it in a recycle view, and this is very straightforward because they're just arranged vertically. So you just use your recycle view with a, a linear layout manager in vertical orientation, and you're done. Um, the top bit, um, again, this is coming from our app level service layer, so we don't know anything about how many items we've got or anything yet. Uh, so it's just a, a list of things. Um, we don't know how many there are. Um, but obviously, they're arranged slightly differently. You've got this kind of curved structure. Um, so we kind of knew that um, the big thing about RecyclerView when it came out was that it decouples the, the data that you have in your, um, in your adapter from its presentation on screen. So um, you can plug into it different layout managers. So you can plug in um, a linear layout manager to get your vertical lists. Or you can also have grid layout managers, staggered grid, um, you know, if you really fancy. Um, and theoretically, uh, we knew that you could have any sort of custom layout manager if you wanted to show things in a, a different arrangement. So we sort of theoretically knew that this top layout should be possible using those APIs, but we didn't really know how to do it. Uh, you might ask at this point, why didn't we just, uh, this is a static version of the slide you missed, by the way, so it gives you some idea. <laughs> Um, you might ask, why didn't we just reuse the code we already had for iPlayer Radio? Because um, we already had something at the bottom that looks a bit like um, the dial that we're trying to build. So um, the, the short answer is that the world had changed since we built this. Um, this came out in 2013. Um, and in those days, there wasn't any recycler view. Um, if you had to have a list of things, you would, you would have a list view. And if you wanted to display your list view in a different orientation, um, you had to basically have a, write your own list view, because <laughs> list view is just vertical. You couldn't have a horizontal list view. You just had to copy and paste and change a few minus signs or whatever to get it horizontal. So that's ba basically what we did for dial view. It was a sibling of list view. It uh, subclassed this thing, which you probably never even heard of, adapter view, because it's kind of something that you don't typically intera interact directly with nowadays. And, and the top bits. Um, uh, again, it's 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 hooked into scroll view, so it's quite a you know it's a high level uh, you know interaction with the Android API. So you know we we thought that we could probably do better than that. The other thing is that while it's very beautiful, um, it was a lot of code. Oh yeah, we also had our own physics model as well. So um, when you spin the dial, it's it's modelled along like a notched plane. So um, if you can imagine a ball rolling along, if it overshoots, it would kind of gravitate to the like lowest point. And that was all like handwritten, so there's a lot of code to support the dial um, in iPlayer Radio, and lots of buckets. <laughs> Android being what it is, um, you know, obviously it's got to work on all these different screen resolutions. And because you know you're stretching things to fit the screen, and you've got a background image, um, you know, we had a lot of different dimensions and all that sort of thing to deal with. So it was a lot of maintenance, and you know. If we ever had any requirements to change it, people tended to sort of just be a little bit scared and sort of, you know, shuffle at their feet and not want to pick up the tickets because, you know, people were a bit nervous about playing with the dial. So we wanted to try and help with that. So um, the BBC Sounds dial comes up and the, there's a ticket to spike it. So I've picked it up. It's very exciting. I don't know what I'm doing at all. I should probably point out at this point. Um, <laughs> so I guess 90% of my Android development day to day has been the sort of classic sort of stuff that you do. It's like just getting an Android widget and putting it into a layout. Here's a text view, here's another text view. I've done like a couple of like custom views and things like that, but um, nothing as fancy as a, a custom layout manager, but I knew that it's theoretically possible. So for the spike ticket, I'm thinking, you know, what's the best way to go about this? So I did what any uh, recycler view and what any person would do when they were trying to um, do this. I went straight to um, Stack Overflow and uh, thought, let's have some fun with recycler view. <laughs> I uh, googled around to try and find out how to how to do this. The trouble with um, trying to Google something like writing a custom layout manager is that there are there's a lot of examples out there. Um, you know, there's stuff online that people have just put their whole, you know, open source projects up, and you can have a look at them, and that's great. 
but it's not that helpful because you know they're quite complex the implementations and it's hard to sort of split that down and say which bit does what you know a lot of them are doing different layouts to what you need and a lot of them are doing different things like animating or you know removing things from lists that we didn't need to care about um, so what I was really hoping for was something that was just um, you know quite step by step in its sort of approach so I thought well I'll, I'll look on the um, the Google documentation site and see what they um, they have and uh, this is what they had <laughs> they had this one line <laughs> which said <laughs> Uh, you just need to extend the stand layout manager, so uh, which reminded me a little bit of uh, this meme. I don't know if you'd seen it. <laughs> um, <laughs> not not really that helpful. What what I was really hoping for was something like this, which was like a, a nice would be nice and step by step guide through. But uh, I couldn't find that. So um, I guess with this slide deck. I wanted to just share my experience and show you the steps that I went through, and hopefully that will be helpful to other people who are trying, trying to build custom layout managers. So <coughs> this, is, this is the kind of hello world example. Um, so I've got, um, I mean, the top bit of code there should be fairly familiar, I guess. It's just, let's have a list of things, um, and then let's put them in a recycler view. Um, you put them in an adapter. Everyone's done code like that before. But the bit where you'd normally have like a, a linear layout manager, I've, I've just hooked in this custom layout manager. So, and, and then I've, I've implemented, I've done what they said in the docs, basically. I've extended that class. Um, and when you extend the class, there's only one method that you have to override. Um, so I've overridden it, and that's it. And it compiles, and it even runs. So what happens? Nothing. <laughs> Which is fair enough, because we haven't told it how to lay anything out. Um, so how would it possibly know? So what do you do next? Well, there's a clue in the logs, actually. Um, it tells you that you must override on layout children, which sounds like a useful thing to tell Android how to do. So at this point, where do you go from here? At this point, I really kind of just had to go to like the source code for Linear Layout Manager in Android, in the Android Open Source Project, and have a look at how they'd done it. Um, and just go back to a load of, you know, docs about Recycler View and its internals, and try and figure out how everything fits together and, and what what we have to do here. So this is what I found. Um, basically, if you, what your layout manager needs to do to get something on screen in on layout children, it needs to ask the Recycler View for the view at that position, and the Recycler View will give it a, a fully populated view. So. The Recycler view handles all the sort of data binding, so you've got something that looks like it needs to look when it goes on screen. Um, once you've got your view, you need to do three things. You need to call up to three methods on Layout Manager, which is the superclass. You need to call Add View to put it on the screen. Measure Child gives it the dimensions of the view that you're going to put on the screen. And Layout just tells it where to position it on the screen. And once you've done all those three things, that should be enough to get something showing. This is like the first sort of baby step, really. So um, I thought I was just desperate to try and get something on screen to check that it was all, you know, wired up correctly. So this is my first um, attempt to get something on the screen. Um, so we're getting the. Can I use the pointy thing? Oh, I can look. So um, <laughs> I get the, the view at position zero. And then I add it. Um, and I just give it some widths. Just made up a width for now. <laughs> and then uh, I just give it the the left, right, top, and bottom. So that's the dimensions of the thing. Uh, the, the origins at the top left on Android. So left and top are both zero. And then you just add on the view width um, for the right and bottom. So so then I just call measure child with the view and the width of it. Um, and then the layout. You just give it the position of it. So you run that, and you get something showing, which is really exciting, <laughs> a thing. Uh, you know, we're not quite there, but it's a step. So um, giddy with the excitement of this achievement, I thought, well, let's just iterate over a few things and see if we can get multiple things on screen. So this is my next increment. So um, the, the difference here really is just that I'm, I'm iterating over the first four things, and I'm um, I'm adding them to the screen, but the only thing is the left position 
of, of each one is determined by the index, obviously, because you don't want them all to be on top of each other. So the, the, um, the left egg edge is just lined up with the right edge of the previous one. And you do that, and you get four things. <laughs> so it's getting better. <laughs> so, oh yeah, it's probably worth mentioning at this point, um, margins, uh, so when you call measure child and layout decorated, I've not had, I don't use margins in, the, in this example because um, I've put padding on each item, I've put layout bounds in this view so you can see, but um, basically that's because for my use case, I didn't want the user's finger to sort of fall between the items, I wanted everything to be selectable um, and I didn't want them to sort of miss <laughs> and go, why didn't that work? So there's, there's no margins basically. Um, but if you do want to use margins, then you have to use these two separate methods which consider margins. I don't know why, but you do. Um, so the next thing, um, I guess we have to think about scrolling. Um, so um, RecycleView handles a lot of this for you. Um, when it, it gets the touch event and does all the processing on that to decide whether it's a, a scroll or a fling or you know all that sort of stuff. Um, and then if it's decided to pass it on to the layout manager, it will go, OK, um, can the layout manager scroll horizontally or vertically, which you need to state in your implementation of layout manager by overriding either or both. You can have both at once of these two can scroll horizontally or can scroll vertically. Um, and then it, once, once you've said that you can support that type of scrolling, uh, recycle view will call either scroll horizontally by or scroll vertically by with the the delta of how much you scrolled so um, what you do then is you basically need to do the same steps that you've just done to just sort of put the stuff on your screen so it's the same three meta calls as before um, so at this point it might be time to do a little bit of a refactor um, and pull those out into another method which I called fill because um, I, I found a in, in the linear layout manager source code, it, it, that's what they call it. So I just kind of copied off there. <laughs> uh, I think this is a fairly common convention, actually. So now, this is what our code looks like. So we've said we can scroll horizontally, uh, and then we've overridden scroll horizontally by. So this gets the delta. Uh, we need to save this in some state. Sorry, Daniel, some state. I know you don't like state. Um, <laughs> and then we call fill on the recycler, um, with, with the recycler, sorry. So that, that's the code from the previous example just moved into this fill method. Um, so that's, that's the only difference, really. And on layout children, that's been extracted into, f that just calls straight through to fill. And the only difference in our fill method is that we now have to take into account this scroll offset. Um, so we just use that to position the left-hand edge of, of the, the view. So that's it, really. That's Pretty straightforward, right? So let's see what happens. This, I love this. Look at this. <laughs> I mean, that's nailed it, right? So uh, <laughs> it kind of reminds me of uh, this sort of scenario where uh, you know <laughs> we just kind of smeared it across the screen. So uh, yeah, we need to basically do that because it's almost doing the right thing. But we also need to clean up a bit after ourselves, don't we? So um, at this point, you need to sort of understand a little bit about how RecycleView works. Um, in its internals. So it can get views. If, if you ask it for a view, it will either get the, it will look first in the uh, scrap heap, uh, which is um, like its own sort of internal store of views, and they're all fully populated with the data they need, ready to go, ready to put on the screen. If it can't find the view that it needs in there, then it'll go to the recycle pool, and then that will call on bind view on the adapter. So this is the bit we're all kind of familiar with, where you know you, you, you override on bind view in your adapter and you populate it with all the data it needs. But obviously this this route is slightly slower. Um, so for optimal performance, if if you have a view that you're just basically you've got on screen and you just want to move it a little bit, um, you, you want to use the scrap heap because that that's all you need to do. It's not going off screen. You're just going to move it slightly. So um, so basically, in our fill method, we need to start now by calling this um, detach and scrap attached views, which is um, on the superclass. But that basically, what that does, it just takes everything um, in the recycler and puts it on the scrap heap. And then we take everything off the scrap heap uh, and then use our fill method as before. And then at the end, um, 
anything that we've not used that's still in the scrap heap, we can just recycle. Um, this is a bit messy because um, we've got to do a defensive copy because um, you'll find that in a lot of these kind of view level type things, they're all very sort of performance optimized. So you kind of get live objects everywhere and it's like, whoa, I didn't want to change that state. So uh, we do a defensive copy. Uh, otherwise, you'll just get a concurrent modification exception when you try and uh, work with this. So that's what that does. Um, so, bas so basically, you're just getting everything, scrapping everything, taking things out of the scrap heap as you need them to fill the screen. And then once you've done your layout pass, bin everything that was still in the scrap heap. So uh, this is what our full fill method looks like now. Um, we, um, it's as before, we're just iterating through the whole list and doing the add view and then measure layout and then putting everything into the scrap, from the scrap heap into the uh, recycling it at the end. So if we do that, then we get da -da 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 -da, something scrolling, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, way. <laughs> oh, thanks very much, thanks. Uh, I mean, you know, it's not as good as linear layout manager even, but thank you. Um, <laughs> so, um, so the next thing, I mean, it, it's not quite like what we had in our original wireframes. Um, they wanted it to loop, basically. Um, so, you know, that's something that Linear Layout Manager doesn't do for you. Uh, so it's not actually that difficult to get from where we are to doing the looping. Um, all we've done is basically work out uh, the first and last visible position. Because what we, what, how we did this on Android, which is a little bit different to how, how it works on iOS, actually. Um, but we, we just basically take the, the visible elements in our, um, in our data set, and then you can have an, a position which is anywhere, like any number you know, positive or negative, and, and then we just basically mod it and say, um, you know, what would that be if it was in our data set? Um, that's uh, there. <laughs> and then we just kind of use that to, to get the view for that. Um, yeah, if it, sometimes it gives you negative numbers, so you have to just stick it on the end if it's negative. Um, but yeah, so obviously we have to constrain it to the actual contents of the um, screen now, because you could get all kinds of crazy numbers. So that's what the first visible position is. So uh, that just uses the offset. So obviously, if you scrolled, say you scrolled like 50 pixels, your offset's 50 pixels, and everything's 10 pixels wide, you're five, to the, you're five long. So that's just what that dividing is. Um, so yeah, so that now uh, means that when you get to the, the start, it'll just go to the end. And when you get to the end, it'll just go to the start. So now um, we've got a, a wrapping list. <laughs> so it's slightly, uh, slightly closer. We're getting closer all the time. So you might think we're doing really well, but actually we've just, um, we've just committed a bit of a, a terrible thing there because um, we've totally ruined accessibility for everybody. Um, sorry. <laughs> so um, what, what you'll find now is that... Um, so normally when you have um, voiceover on, uh, talkback on, you, if you scroll through a list with accessibility, uh, when you get to the end, it'll just move on to the next item. But obviously, if you've got a, a looped list, you'll just kind of go on round and round forever. We've basically made this happen, um, which is not very useful. So um, there are multiple ways you could fix this. I, uh, I'll take that gift off before you all go dizzy. Um, <laughs> this is a pretty simple way of doing it, um, which just basically says, uh, it just sets Im important for your accessibility to no on anything that's not outside of our core data set. So it basically means that you just won't be able to accessibility swipe to anything outside the original uh, list. Um, so that's one thing you can do. But it's also worth just pointing out at this stage, I think, once you get to this level of implementing things, you know, you're, you're kind of, with great power comes great responsibility, I guess. And with the um, recycler view, if you use it in the normal ways, you, you, all the accessibility isn't handled for you quite nicely. But when you get to this level, you just need to make sure that you keep testing it for things like this, because all sorts of crazy things might happen that you don't expect. So it's just kind of a word to, of warning. Anyway, now's the fun bit, the maths bit. <laughs> so um, it's, <laughs> it's worth pointing out that um, this bit's going to be completely different for everybody's use case. Um, obviously, you, you probably won't have to make exactly the same collection for you that recycle view that um, that we did. So um, you know your maths will probably be different. But I thought it was probably worth going through what I did just because it's useful to see sort of how you approach it and how you break it down. Um, 
and there's no shortcuts for it really. You can't do your Stack Overflow driven development and just find the exact maths that you need. You kind of, you need to just kind of channel your inner school child and uh, you know, draw some. Basically, you just the, the steps for maths are just like you know, you draw uh, a picture of what you want and you mark on what you know and, and what you don't know and try and write down some statements that connect them. So um, for our case, um, I thought for the first increment. Uh, let's just try and lay it out along a semicircle. I know that's not exactly what we have, but let's just see if we can get that working. So in that case, it's fairly simple, actually. We just know that um, the things in green are the things that you know, and the things that are in red are the things that you don't know. <laughs> so we know the x value, because uh, we've been doing that you know, in the last few slides. We've just been calculating the uh, left-hand edge re of each view from the right-hand edge of the previous view, and, and so on. Uh, just spacing them out equally across the screen. Um, but the y coordinate that, that we were given to um, in on layout children was, was always zero, so it was just always at the top of the screen. But now um, we can just work out what that offset is and just feed it into our fill method, and then that'll be all cool. So, um, so we know the x uh, offset, uh, and we know the width of the screen, so... Um, and we know the radius of the circle, because that's just half of the width of the screen if it's a semicircle. Um, and actually, if we knew the other side of that triangle, um, that would be great, wouldn't it? Because then we could just say, you know, the y value is just the radius minus that other side of that triangle. So this is where the trigonometry comes in. So you have to try and remember, what was it? Some old horses can't always hear their owner's approach, or whatever your personal mnemonic was. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically we find out from that that uh, this value is r sine alpha, this angle. Um, but you might say, well, how do we know what that angle is? Well, actually, oh, well, that's helpful, isn't it? That, that bar's over there. But uh, that's uh, alpha is x over w times pi. So basically is what that says. So the reason it's that is because we're just saying that the, the angle um, of that, that the radius makes as it goes around is... Um, directly proportional to the, the x value, so it's just whatever fraction of the way across the screen we are um, times by you know, the full angle, which is 180 degrees, which is pi radians, if you're using the math library. So, um, so there we go, we know everything now, so it's just, uh, we can just plug all those values in. Um, so it's actually, there you go, that's it, it's only four lines. Um, we know that um, y is r minus r sine alpha, and I've worked out alpha, uh, and that's it, you know, it's dead easy. Um, so, and then you get this, you get like a semicircular thing, which uh, kind of doesn't look quite like what we wanted, but you know, we're getting close. So the next bit is really fun bit. <laughs> so um, the, the, again, there's no shortcuts. I just, this, this is great. It just meant that, you know, all those times in school when they say, you know, you're gonna need loads of trigonometry in your day-to-day -day job. I'd never had to use trigonometry in my day job until this came along and it was like, this is brilliant. You know, just put your leather elbow patches on and like come in and <laughs> just sit and scribble some equations in the corner of the, uh, the office. So that's literally what I did. <laughs> uh, but I've drawn that a bit better for you here so you can see it a bit better. Um, so the, the yellow bit at the top is basically your screen. So we've now got a slightly flattened arc. Um, and it's, it's the y value is the same. It's just r minus r sine alpha. But unfortunately, this time, we don't know, um, we don't know r um, because it's not the same as half the width of the screen anymore. And we don't know alpha either um, because it's, there's this other angle beta that I've put in. So, um, but if you look at the... Um, I've called this thing under the bar here is, is S. That's, that's half the width of the screen. I started running out of letters, unfortunately, here. But we can actually work out R um, from this bottom triangle using a bit of Pythagoras, which I've not used for a while either. Um, so you can work that out. You know everything else in that um, equation, so that's cool. Um, <coughs> and then you can work out um, the alpha value because, um, well, you need to work out beta first. So that's just that's cosine. So um, that's, you, you know, the, this S is the half the screen width and um, the radius there. So you can see those, you know those two sides of that triangle, so you can work out that angle. Um, and then you can work out alpha because that's just, um, it's, it's beta plus whatever percentage of the way of that sort of segment you are um, uh, times the, that segment size, which is just pi minus two beta because it's like 180 degrees minus those two angles. 
So um, once you've got that, you know everything again, and you can just substitute it in. So, um, oh yeah, and so Greg sent me this after I'd done all this maths, and uh, <laughs> if I'd remembered my schooling better, I'm, I mean, I know it's hard to believe, but it is quite a little while ago that I was in school and I'd forgotten all this. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but this is on Wikipedia if I'd bothered to look it up. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so there we go. So that's, that's it with the complicated version. It's really not that bad. It's not, you know, nearly as bad as our previous dial code with it was, um, you know, so it's, it's quite simple. Um, we're just doing, again, we're just doing um, uh, y equals r minus r sine alpha, but you've just calculated alpha from beta and the fraction of the way across the screen you are times that segment size. Um, so yeah, we just plug all those values in, and then you, you end up with this. So it's like a flattened arc. I've put layout bounds on. Oh, I've shifted it down a little bit so that you can, you can see that it touches the top of the screen as well, and I've put layout bounds on to show the padding in each item. So, so yeah, I mean, we're, we're pretty nearly there now, really. Um, uh, and this is what it ended up looking like. And so really, you know, it's not many more steps to get from, you know, that previous example to this. Um, so I guess the, the main thing I wanted to communicate with this talk really is that even if there's no documentation and you don't know what you're doing <laughs> and you're kind of flailing around trying things, you know, it is possible just to break things down into little steps and and get things progressively looking better and looking closer to what you want, and, and just not to be afraid to give it a try. So, um, yeah, that's it really. If you need any more information, uh, this is a really good talk that I found about sort of the, it's, it's like a technical deep dive into Recycle View. That's how I found out all that stuff about the scrap heap and how to use it. Um, and the, the source code is all available in, in this uh, GitHub sample project. So, um, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>
Thanks for the talk. I just wondered, after seeing Greg yesterday and you today, how much did each of your work inform the other? Were you able to share some, some ideas? Obviously, very different UIs, but. Yeah, no, we, we did work very closely together on it. So all the maths part of it um, is, you know, obviously the same. And uh, the, when, we, when we were developing it, we did work very closely together and just sort of talk through like how it worked on each platform. I mean, there were slight differences, um, you know, like the, the sort of the way we, we sort of um, in Greg's talk, he talked about sort of just filling in like just as just in time on, on either side of it, and it wasn't quite the same on Android. We just kind of did use the mod thing to, to limit what we could see, um, and the API is obviously a slightly different, um, but it's it's basically very similar. Um, there was a lot of similarities, and we did work very closely on it. Yeah. Anyone else? Looks good, in that case, thank you very much, Polly. Thank you.